Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Julie's Orchids. It's been a little bit since we've done a tour of the grow room, and so I thought we'd have a look and see what's going on with the orchids today. So we'll start off having a look at our mounts. Uh, you know, we've put a few mounts together. Uh, one thing I'm happy to say is I've got this little Tulumnia on this mount here that's putting out a nice flower spike. Other than that, all the other little mounted things we have seem to be going along okay. Not much going on with the plants on the top shelf here, or really not much of anything going on with most of these plants here. However, my Ludicia discolor, my only jewel orchid I have left, has got a couple flower spikes going. And we'll swing on down here to this bottom shelf. And we can see that Phragmopedium sidenii candidum is, oh, got two flower spikes. You can see a third flower spike coming right back there. And this one's got, well, the second bloom is opening here. Um, and they're just going along quite nicely. Those two frags there are just growing along. And that Brassavola, uh, no, Brassidium is doing just fine. So we're going to swing around and look at some of the other shells. But let's just have a look at Phragmopedium sidenii candidum. Up here on this shelf, we can see that species Phragmopedium piercei has been putting out flower after flower after flower off its spike. And we've got this one still going right there. Uh, the rest of the frags are just growing. We've got Phragmopedium pink panther here that's been uh, reblooming off this same spike for quite some time. You can see a nice little bud forming up there. Coming on down to, this is the Brassavola shelves um, and the Cattleyas, they're not doing much. Cattleya purpurata that we did a repotting on not that long ago. New spike has grown quite nicely. We've got a sheath in there, but just look at all of that happy sap. That, that's a happy damn plant. Pardon my French, that's a happy plant right there. Uh, it's really taken quite nicely to the pumice, and I'm hoping that that's not a blind sheath, and that gives us my first Cattleya reblooming. Now we'll swing on down here to one of the shelves with my paths, and we can see that we've got path species path Gratrixianum uh, in bloom right there, um, and yeah, path Duo de Citron is putting out. A flower spike there. Uh, not much else going on with the path, so we'll come right on down and have a look with um, Cattleya Yellowbird. Uh, Cattleya Yellowbird has taken a little bit of a beating. It didn't perhaps like my environment. I think I was giving it too much light. You can see how much anthocyanin is on there. Uh, so I raised the shelf up a bit. That seems to have helped, but look at those beautiful flowers on Cattleya yellow bird. And we'll swing on over from that shelf to, uh, we've got species Oncidium cephalatum, uh, candy and dancer, and sherry baby there. They're just growing away. Uh, just look at all those crazy roots coming out of that pot. That one's going to need to be repotted. And when I do that, it's going to get thinned down. I uh, had some lights burn out on this path shelf, and I've got a few more of the long light spot to sort of finish off replacing my lights. Um, I just haven't had time to get around to replacing that. doesn't seem to be bothering these paths too much, um, but they will get their light replaced. Uh, up here to sort of a mixed shelf of Sarcochylus lelia and some Aceoclades. Uh, I don't know what's happened here. My Aceoclades spatula flora uh, that I've grown from flask has all of a sudden just 
not doing good. I have no idea what's going on there. Uh, Sarcochylus are a genus that I have always struggled with and am still struggling with them. However, uh, the Lelia are doing pretty nice. We've got a flower spike coming right there. Uh, this one sort of aborted through the hot of the summer last year. That's okay. Uh, it was its first spike. It was grown for me and that's all right. Need a little bit of time to get settled in. And from this shelf, we'll come on up and have a look at our zygos. Um, we got a lot of new growths coming on some of the zygos. This is a a flask baby that I, I got. Um, it's a neopapstopetalum, uh, zygopetalum mix, and I'm really happy that it made it to a big pot. Uh, so this one, I, I've had it for two years from flask, and yeah, I'm just tickled, beyond tickled. We'll swing over to this shelf of the zygos, and I've got this little one right here that I believe I got from Lynn at Lynn Brooks Orchids. Anyway, it's Zygo Volcano Queen Tropicalis. I take that back. I didn't get that from Lynn. Um, but it's putting on a little flower spike, and I'm quite happy with that. Again, back there, this is another one of the flask babies. Uh, this is also a neopapstopetalum, uh, zygopetalum mix. And we've got another nice new growth coming along here. So I'm pretty tickled with these shelves. And now we'll zing on down here to the our, uh, Arades and in Gracoid shelves. Um, again, these all have taken quite a beating with the spider mites and things that I have been dealing with. Um, we'll zoom on into here. Here is Eastern Australian native terrestrial orchid that's come out of its dormancy. This is Sterotylus curta, and I'm blasting it with as much light as I can because last year I did not give it enough light and it got really long and leggy. I think this is a lot more of how it's supposed to look. That one's doing okay. And we're going to come on down here to some of the dendrobiums now. This one here is its first time blooming for for the plant and for me because I bought it as a seedling. Um, and I'm really happy to see that we've got our first bloom spike off that one. And these ones down here, uh, that is the Sydney rock orchid, the species Dendrobium speciosium. And this is a Dendrobium speciosium mix. Uh, they're coming along quite nicely. They've really enjoyed getting put into uh, the pumice. Uh, here we have our little Dendrobium yaya. And that was in bloom. And it did pretty good at one of the local shows and just generalized of some random Dendrobiums. That one's a species. This one is Berry Oda. And that one is by Jibum variety compactum. This shelf, again, light has died and this is holding dead things right now. <laughs> we'll come on up to our Encyclia Prosteclia shelf. Uh, and you can see these are all quite really happy. We have uh, Encyclia Cochleata still coming along so nicely with this flower spike. This plant has been in some form of flower spike or bloom for almost a year now. As the one flower spike is dying off, the a new growth is putting out another one. I'm just so, so tickled with that one. Uh, we'll pop on up here to our own Cindiums. Um, again, I had a little trouble with the heat and some air conditioning problems, and you can kind of see that in some of my, my plants. Um, but we've got one of my twinkles with the flower spike. And, you know, everyone knows twinkle flower spikes take forever to mature and bloom. All right, guys, so that's a little buzz through the grow room itself. Uh, we'll head on over to where I have all the phalaenopsis growing at, and we'll have a look at those because I've got quite a few of the fowls in spike or in bloom. So let's head on into the lounge room and have a look at the fowls. All right, as we come into the lounge room, not just the fowls are in here, but also some of my big frags. And this one here is Phragmopedium Sorcerer's Apprentice. And yes, it is still in bloom. And this flower spike is reaching the height of my chin at this point in time. I, this is well over a five foot tall flower spike. And that's insane. That's absolutely fabulous. Uh, we'll have a look at the flowers here, and you can see it just keeps going and going and going. Uh, there's another bud forming and another bud forming in there. Um, 
yeah, I don't know how tall this flower spike is going to get, but we're going to let it go until, until it stops. Now we'll have a look at the fowls here in the lounge room. Um, none of the ones up there are in bloom. And we've got a flower spike on this Miltodinium Hawaiian sunset. That flower spike has already spent, but it's growing a second one back there. So not going to complain too bad. These little fowls here, that's fowl philippinensis and fowl stortiana. Uh, these two are flask babies and look at how big they're getting. Look at how big these flask babies. I'll put a link to their deflasking up here. But these were my flask babies. Look at how nice and big they are. Um, by comparison to that little flask baby that's not been out of flask. I got that one from uh, Lynn at Lynn Brooks Orchids. Uh, that's Fowl Lilu Berries. And then that is Fowl Stuartiana, one of my flask babies. And that is Fowl Philippinensis, also one of my flask babies. So we'll swing on over to this one and look at these fowls here that are in bloom. Uh, this one is a Corner Deli Rehab and Rescue. So it's a no ID, but that's just a beautiful flower right there. Um, Fowl Hieroglyphica. Now, one, two spikes going, uh, putting out new roots right now. Uh, this is Fowl No ID, but obviously has some Philippinensis in it. Uh, this one has a very lovely fragrance. They're quite small flowers, um, but it has a very subtle, lovely fragrance that compared to Fowl Shaleriana down here, uh, you really can't distinguish the two different smells. Uh, the rosy smell of Sturitiana overpowers whatever smell that one is getting. Fowl Equestris here is still producing flowers on its flower spike. And then we've got this gorgeous thing. Now, this gorgeous thing right here, look at that. This is a no ID Corner Deli Phalaenopsis Rescue. Um, that has put out that beautiful, absolutely gorgeous flower spike. Now, again, this one is just a no ID. Uh, and it's, you know, I like the white fowls, but with the striations and the pink colorations on that lip, uh, this is just, for me, a beautifully stunning phalaenopsis. And we'll come down here and have a look at what's going on here. So first time blooming for me, again, these are all no ID Phalaenopsis Corner Deli rescues that are finally big enough and I think strong enough and recovered enough that I'm gonna let them bloom out. I don't remember what this one's blooms look like, got no clue. Uh, also over here, another Corner Deli Phalaenopsis rescue putting out its first spike for me. Again, don't know what it looks like. We'll find out when it blooms. And to save the best for last, uh, here's Phalaenopsis shaleriana. And this is becoming quite reliable bloomer for me. Uh, now last year it put out two flower spikes. Uh, this year it did one, but this one branched quite a bit more than any of them I've put out before. And again, this one has a beautiful uh, fragrance of rose. So my house smells absolutely divine. Well, there you go, guys. That was a quick tour of the grow room for August 2024. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. A subscribe would be great. You guys might notice now that I've got channel membership available. Uh, Julie's Orchids has made it that far. So I've opened up channel membership if you guys are interested to help support the orchids, um, I appreciate that too. Not the best at marketing myself. I uh, can't say it was ever planned to go um, monetizing my channel, but it's organically grown that way. So I've opened up Friends of Julie's Orchids, otherwise known as Fojo's. And if you're interested in 
what I plan on doing, any income I get from my orchids will go back into my orchids. Thank you again so much for watching. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. A subscribe would be great.